I think we usually don't. So, but uh, what what is your guys wanted level in heat at the moment? Oh, right. Is there a wanted level in heat? We have one, two, three, four, five, six heat, and a couple wanted level. No big deal. Oh mm -hmm. boy. So that is two dice. Lane. And that okay. gets us. Three feet six. A one and two. Flipped or interrogation. Um Interrogation for time I wonder. Ooh, yeah. Let's do interrogation. I think one of you is going to get picked up by the blue coats. Uh, who do you guys think it ought to be? Not me, because I'm not conscious. <laughs> Did you lose conscious again on a on a job? I got the ghost wound, the level three oh, harm yeah. ghost wound that yeah, can't yeah. be healed. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh wow! What happened there? <laughs> he, he I, went, I killed he the went. same person I killed before. Who who happened to be a vampire? Oh boy! You remember oh, the yeah. leader of the red sashes? Yeah, the, of the particular house of uh, ill repute. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh, yep. Well, she uh, came yeah. came back yeah. in her body right. as a vampire. Yeah, that's what Pete had let me know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. And I went ghost to kill her spirit so she wouldn't come back, and she stabbed me back again. Well, I guess I can get picked up again. They picked me up once before. Nice. I mean, they don't want to find you, and you know, and I think it fits. Like Dashiell is 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 probably a definitely a usual suspect in the area. You know, he gives you know, I think he generally gives people the creeps, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, just just because he's you know a, a apparently soulless killing machine. Um. I have a soul. It might be black and twisted, but I have a soul. You have two, one on the bottom of each shoe. <laughs> yeah, so I think they're gonna yeah, they're gonna pick you up and um and uh, question you about oh uh, so uh yeah, so it's uh, a couple of these blue coats. You uh I think you know uh you know of this group this gang of like uh you know four of them to pick you up. You know a couple of them. Uh, you, uh, yeah, I think a couple of them by name. Um, and uh, yeah, better. Okay, so yeah, they're gonna pick you up, pick a couple of, pick you up, and uh, take you back to to uh, to one of their stations. So. Uh, how do you think they managed to capture you in the first place? It is one of the questions listed in the group and the thing. Um, I'm walking my dog. Okay. Just grab you walking your dog. So oh, hopefully they don't kill the dog. That's always a bad thing to do. Was that the beginning of John Wick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It was Probably just a dog. So they're gonna they they sit you down in a room, and um, uh, Officer uh, yeah, um, Officer Beavis says uh, so. <laughs> says, uh, so so I hear uh hear the Emerald the uh, Emerald Dragon uh, 
just just change the hands. Better new management, eh? Really? I never fre frequented much. Let's see. But you have frequented, right? Well, not that place. Very often. Oh. Oh, my man. I heard my, they have oh, good, I heard guess, they have uh, good our informants are wrong. Are they? Street. There but there are a couple of a couple of former uh former guys from the uh little red sashes. As a matter of fact, there's a mother who says uh says you killed two of her sons there. Really? What was the mother doing there? Was she working? Well, I'm not at liberty to say. You freak with the place too, huh? I guess you like older women. Look, here's uh, here's how this goes down. Um, oh, you, did you go down or did she go down? Oh, Ashley's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even need a shovel. <laughs> All right, so, so now's your chance. I said, so, so your options are you option C. Your options are you can either um, pay them three coin and they leave you alone, or, or they're going to beat you up and get, get whatever information they want out of you. Um, so you're going to, you're going to get, you're going to take some heat and some harm, or you can pay them some money. Is there an option C where they can beat me up and I don't tell them anything? <laughs> Not <laughs> in this paragraph here, but you can resist each of those consequences separately. Right? So you can resist the harm and you can resist the telling them what they want to know as two separate roles. This is a situation where they like they definitely know you guys did this. And they definitely know you're associated with the group. <laughs> and can I pay them some money not to tell them anything and they can still beat me up? <laughs> you wanna you want a discount? <laughs> compromise. Some kind of compromise. <laughs> All right. He says uh so I'll take a couple coin, but we are going to have to make sure that people see you with some bruises. You know, you know, you and I go way back, uh, Dashiell. What do I get for one coin? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Broken rib. Yeah, I think it's, you're still going to definitely take that uh, level two hard. And for two coin, just some bruises. Look, we just got to we got to make sure that we uh, that we're, that we're... I understand. My friend, we, you and I, we're both part of organizations that are trying to keep some level of peace in the in the area, right? We perform a public service, yes. Exactly, and but, uh, but we have other obligations. We gotta we gotta make sure that the appearance of propriety. So, you can just give me the details on uh, you know who all was involved in this job, and uh, you know we could just we could just kind of leave it at that. Well, I heard the red sashes had some internal troubles. I think the leader of that place was a vampire. Now that's interesting. Let me let's sit down and talk about this. But I heard she gave jobs for free. You weren't happy to. 
me of being into uh, necrophilia, were you? Oh, God. We got to do this. All right, boys. I guess we're doing this. <laughs> uh, how, how about one coin? I talk to the proprietors for a freebie, and I take some bruises. <laughs> no, I think uh, I, I think they're just going to beat you up now. <laughs> oh, All right. So do you want to do you want to resist telling them telling them more information first? Because that's not that. I'm getting the sense that that is the more important piece to you. Yes, I don't want to tell them a thing. That's what I thought. All right. So, and I think this is going to be based off of, uh, I mean, whatever. Okay, I'm pulling it from my character sheet. This is going to be probably, I think. What, what do you guys, what, what does the physical stuff go off of? Uh, uh, prowess is generally physical. Prowess. Okay, yeah, so prow. So, you're going to resist with your prowess? Sure. You're going to take six minus whatever you get on this prowess roll. There are no, like, pluses or minuses on this. It's just a straight, straight prowess roll. And can I push myself or no? Nope, no, no, just, just make the roll. Just prowess. There's no point in pushing it because I mean, then you're taking strain to try to avoid taking strain. Okay. So no bonus dice. Nah, just roll it. Okay. So you're going to take one strain or one stress. I apologize. One stress. Okay. All right. And would you like to to uh, resist the uh, the level two harm as well? Sure. All right. That is an, the the same roll. Another prowess roll. Yeah, I think so. You know what? I should have had it as as um, resolve to re to resist not saying things, shouldn't I? Oh well. No bonus days. Someday I will get better at this game. All right. So no no stress. <laughs> wow. So they spend like about an hour or so beating you up, and uh, you know. You've got like, you know, like a like a nosebleed and everything when you walk out of there. I mean, you look kind of rough, but then you know, then they're all kind of disheartened when they see you walking down the street, you know, as if nothing had happened afterwards. Tell the uh, the guy that knew me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of <clears throat> in a an aside, you know, half whisper. If you still want that discount, let me know. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> he didn't say no. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess he didn't. All right, so. All right, so we start, start right with that. I love it. Um, so you guys do not take the extra heat. Uh, which would put, which it's a good thing because Pete just saved you guys from going up to a uh, wanted level three. Yeah. Hooray, Pete. Yep. I can take it and I can dish it out. Yep. Okay, so I think uh, we've come to downtime now. <laughs> uh, as usual, our start with Jenny. Because she's the does it does it put him in like alphabetical order? Is that what's going on? No, it's not alphabetical order. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, we'll just do the the order. I didn't really need to uh, you know like try to relieve some stress for my downtime. Okay. So I believe what I do is I click on this indulge advice button. I believe you do. And then I click the submit. I believe you do. And then I click over to see what I rolled. I got a six and a three. What does that mean? I mean, you take a, you you relieve six stress. Six. You did really well. Hey, Lehman. Yep. Yeah. Yes. You had mentioned um, going to jail 
to try and uh, talk with the uh, the Bill Hooks boss. Right. Oh, that is a thing you guys could do. Yep. Oh, wow. So you were trying to get there quickly, but they'd probably put you so, in solitary for that. I'm, the reason I'm asking is I'm about halfway to another playbook advancement and one of the things I was considering was uh, oh iron hook contacts no the spider we have that as the group no the the spider has jailbird yeah when incarcerated your wanted level counts as one less your tier is one more and you gain plus one faction status with a faction you help on the inside in addition to your incarceration role. Um, yeah, you know, if that's something that we plan to do, I would I could skip what I was gonna take and take that instead. Um, I don't know what, you know, if that was something somebody else was planning or or what. Do we have a spider? Yeah, I think I'm the spider. Let me pull up my sheet. Yeah. Yeah, so I I wasn't planning on taking that anytime soon, but that could be the next. Well, like achieve. I said, I'm I'm halfway to uh, a yeah, new special ability, and I could certainly take that. Just just something to think about. But since it was Lehman's idea about you know going to jail to you know try and work something out with the bill hooks. It'd be another cool thing to explore. Um, so let me hey, back Bob? over. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, would it be possible for more than one of us to go to jail? Yeah, probably. Oh, for sure. The way we're going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we could we could probably find a way to get you all in prison if you guys, you know, really wanted to set that up. I'm, I'm sure you guys could think of something. How how much of a bonus would it be if more than one of us had that? Uh, you know, I don't know that that. Or would stack. or would just one of us having that? Yeah, work uh, for... I don't know that it would stack much. So, but if one of us had it, would it kind of work for the whole group? If that I person, was kind so. of the spokesman, yeah. whatever. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Um, but I forgot to mention that. You know, so so because you guys increased your tier at the end of the last session, I mean, so this means that like the last week or so, the last several weeks, you know, since uh, since taking over the Emerald Dragon, you guys have there's been a lot of activity around uh, around your headquarters as like you know as new equipment you know new equipment's upgraded. You uh, you got new. Um, you got uh, a, a bunch, you know, about, uh, I think you had probably like five or six guys in your uh, in your little gang before. That was about a new, dozen. New recruits? Yeah, you got, uh, you know, new new folks showing up, working with your team. Um, you're, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're confident that you're like, you're, like your knives are sharper and your armor is thicker. And uh, like all of your equipment, like is just, it's just better. Or at least um, you've got the time. Or uh, you know the access to the surfaces to to keep it in better shape. So things are really looking up. Yep. Also, let you know our people know about our new infirmary. Oh yeah. Um, Joe. Yes. What's Aldo Creel up to? Keel, First sorry. thing he's going to do is visit the club and indulge his vice. Right he's a bit stressed. So beat the people up. We're going to okay. need to do some heat too at some point. Probably. Oh. Okay. The mediocre results, sir. Yes. But hey, it's better than nothing. Cleared half my stress. Yeah, not bad. Mm hmm. All right, next is Lehman. I'm going to heal. 
You get two dice, remember. Oh, two it should be three dice. Now. Three dice. Sorry, because it's a tier two plus another tier plus another one because you got your uh, your infirmary now. Mm -hmm. The infirmary and the, the medic. Yep. So four is two. Well, you can you can spend a coin to to uh, to increase that, you know. I don't have coin to spend. Well, then I guess you can. Do you want a loan? Nope. I am going to be unconscious. Yay! Could I pay a coin to get him conscious? I don't want to be conscious. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's all the more reason to uh bring him conscious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that is that is all the more reason to, to, to stick him with it. It's not like he can fight you over it. Oh. You know what? Now that I'm seeing the notes on here, this is Right. So, so it, so it's not a so this is not a wound that can be I, 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 from it. Yeah, but my other one can be so. Right, 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 right. So, I mean, so the ones uh, I'll make a note that it has one portion, one pie. And then the other ones at two pie pieces. All right. So, so let me kind of just pitch to the crew. Hey. Um, you know, Vetcher seems to have some sort of like a you know wound that that is not physical at all. Um, is there anything you guys want to do about that? Oh, are his hurt feelings? <laughs> well, Gee. is it Aldo that's a ghost? It, it, no, but no, Aldo is very uh, much um, corporeal. Kristoff is the ghost. Kristoff is the ghost. Um, is there anything Kristoff could do since he's a ghost? Maybe to look at Vetcher? Uh, let me see. What does he have that would... Uh, well, I mean, when, he... when you... Since you're somewhat incorporeal, when you look at someone else who's got incorporeal aspects, I mean, do you see something that people in the real world don't see? I guess I can look, but no guarantees. Let's see. Actually, what, what I'm trying to think what that would even be. Um, would that be like a study survey or a tune? <laughs> Um, I think it might be an attuned <laughs> thing. Let's see. Let me find. All right. Let's see. All right. He's going to do what he can with it. And I'm going to try to. Okay. okay. All right. So this would be what controlled and yeah, I think so. Controlled. I think uh, um, for and, no. and standard. I would, say, I would say limited success since it's. I mean, it's definitely not an area that you are like. Yeah, like spiritual healing is not really Kristoff's thing, is it? Yeah. Nope. But he still did pretty good. Yep. Right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are there are people who are who are kind of specialized in this sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely like diagnosing. Say so you, you you're sure that there are um, kind of organizations that or or kind of cults that might be better at this kind of stuff. Yeah, um, and we know how much Venture uh, likes the Dimmer Sisters. <laughs> Um, oh, yes, they might be able to tell what's going on with him. So, yes. 
he would just absolutely love that. Yeah, so I start tapping out in um, Morse code or move, moving an object in Morse code to it tap like out. People want me to wake up and, <laughs> and start my project a little faster. <laughs> Look, I mean, it's really funny from like a narrative story standpoint, right? Yeah. Hey, Bob. Yep. I'm gonna like, like if this was a if this was a series, like if if this was a show, this would definitely come up at some point, right? Like <laughs> the veteran character, you know, played by whoever, you know, would get. You know, would get, be in some sort of situation where he'd have to go to the Dimmer Sisters for something, or the, or would wake up in a bed in a Dimmer Sisters. Like this oven. is this is getting B. A. Brockus onto an airplane. Exactly. <laughs> well, well, hey, you're already unconscious, so there we go. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Bob. Yes. I want I want to talk to the my. Physiker friend about. What what do you think's wrong with Vetcher? Do you think he's going to wake up? Do you think euthanasia might be the best option? Oh, man. We don't have time to send him to Thailand. Oh, oh different euthanasia. Okay. Yeah, the the doctor, he's like he's um yeah, this uh, cut on the right arm. I've got this uh, cut. I've got you know, I have it uh Pretty well stitched, and uh, it's you see, it's healing quite well. I don't I have no idea why he hasn't woken up yet. Oh, so we don't have to put him down. I mean, uh, we don't have to rule that out, of course. Uh, I'm just saying we don't have to do a battlefield, you know, amputation like uh, like we did in the war. Uh huh. Because the arm's okay. Uh, perhaps it's in the head, and I don't know about uh, about uh, amputating those. Well, we all know what head traumas can do. What? And I'm going to tap my own head. I don't know what you're talking about. But but Dash seems a little disappointed that we don't have to put Venture down. Or anybody Ooh. down, I guess, for that no, matter. No kind of love at all. I'm in game right now. The evening is young. <laughs> All right, so so Vetcher did some healing. Uh, what is uh, what's Pete doing? I am yeah. gonna my silencer. Oh yeah, you're working on silencer. <sighs> yeah, hit me with that roll. Uh, we got we have a we have a clock for that sucker, right? Yep. Oh, you are almost done. Yep. Position is. That's okay. Yeah, I just controlled. I mean, it's just a straight up roll on this. Controlled standard. Uh -huh. No bonus dice. Yeah, looks like you're Ooh. done. I will delete this clock. You got yourself a silencer, sir. All right. Now, um, do I include that under my uh, load list? Or uh, how do you do that? Maybe we can just, you just modify what it says. Can can yeah, you can just modify the wording of your your rifle and just put you know with silencer. My fine long rifle with silencer. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm done. Okay, I think that brings us to Mike. Okay, so. And or I see you. Yeah. And I am going to work on get the get out of a deal. Oh, yeah. And we did uh, make resolve so that if you train and resolve, you get two pips instead of one now. Yes. Uh, okay, let's see. <clears throat> this is probably just going to be a, a study. I think so. 
Oh, tell me how, how you're going about it. You're just like researching in books and stuff, right? Oh, yeah. So I've been. <clears throat> so I either research in books or I need to seek out an actual person to give me some sort of guidelines. And it means that I need to actually start cavorting with maybe some people who have familiarity with demon summoning and working with demons. Yeah. So that uh that path sounds at least more interesting. Okay. Uh, okay, I can I can see that. And that would uh, let me do a consort instead. Maybe? Yeah, I like that. That sounds that sounds fun. Alrighty. And position is controlled. I think so, yes. Yeah, I mean these 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 downtime activities are generally not dangerous. Unless I'm like asking them to show me the <laughs> not demonstrate how this works. Someone uh no. Exactly. <laughs> Deck standard. Oh goodness. Oh nice. Nice. That is a critical success. Um I think that's be enough to just build build the thing up. So you um Oh, I do. I, I, um, so, so you you uh, meet with some like like antiquarians and and various like you know you know librarians and such, um, and you're kind of deep in like you know with you know going going to going to some of these parties and and uh, you know you spend like a whole week uh, meeting with people and talking and like. You know, making a contact and then like using that contact to to, to meet with the, some other people. Um, you find yourself at the Centralia Club, um, or the the Centralia Club, the um, and it's you know not not until like you show up there that you you recall that this is the um, the headquarters of the Circle of Flame, um, a group that uh, that your party is that uh, your gang has had uh, some some pretty negative relationships with. Um, oh, mostly. yeah, still carrying around the bottle of uh, the light demon. Um, actually, no, you're not. You haven't seen that for a while. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's been that's um right. Like, like nobody's sure exactly when it went missing, but um, you like nobody's seen that thing for a couple of weeks, at least. Right, bro. Um. At the Centralia Club, you um, you know you meet with some you know with, meet with some folks. There's um, there's a bit of a a uh, there's a bit of like a what was that said like a kerfuffle like to, there's a bit of a brouhaha around um, Lord Mora uh, because you know the the owner of the Centralia Club uh, apparently like stole a bunch of money and stuff and left the city. Um, you recall that he's, you know, that in his collection he'd had a copy of this book that you've been trying to get your hands on. The Simple Lie. Yes, The Simple Lie. Um, and so while you're there, you manage to find the opportunity to go back and 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 steal the book. Um, you know, and uh, and and make your way out uh, with that sucker. Okay, so now I just need to find context within the black sand snake. Right, and so they should be good to go. So the uh, yeah, and the the book itself does give details about the black sand snake, as as well as um, where the where the cult is is said to to exist. Um, it's a place out in the um, out in the sands of the uh, of the Aruvian Desert, um, but you have enough information that that you'd be able to get there. Um, it'd probably be some sort of a trek where you'd have to like uh, jump off a train at some point and uh, you know take a take a trek along the out out in the open desert at some point. But 
it could be done. Uh, it also says that with um, one moment. Let me let me find the wording I had for this. Yep, so the uh, black sand snake, um, he is frequently described as a dark skinned man with golden eyes in uh, some ornate desert garb. Um, the uh, where he is. Where he is stationed at or. Uh, rumored to was rumored to uh, to live in the Eben Alcazar. And it said that with the proper gifts and ceremonies, um, he would hear a plea for an exchange for one of his clients. Okay, so Aruvia is quite away from here. <laughs> it is. But it is rather far to the south. Yep. But it may be almost time for me to return. Okay, notes taken. Okay. Now we'll take that clock off the off the map too. You you've done it. Or at least know what to do, you know, as a like a like a big mission to go go do the thing. All right, uh we're back to the front again. Back to the top with Jenny. All right. Jenny. Well, so this is my second downtime? Yep, downtime number two. Okay. Um, do we need anything right now? How's our heat? We need to reduce the heat. Our guys are sitting at about six heat out of nine. Is that bad? Okay. How about if I try to reduce heat? Oh, all right. I would, I would what, are we, what are we heated under heat for? Um, you guys did... Pretty loudly, um, you know, take over, take over some more territory in the uh, in the docks district. All right, killed some people. Yeah. Okay, so it's two brothers. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I have this. Uh, I'm, I'm like, my kid. I think there was a. Um, I think one of the witnesses was actually like a clockwork automaton. Okay. Thing, sure. and uh, I'm going to tinker with it to get it to, like you know, erase its memory or erase whatever it recorded, whatever evidence this you know this. Okay. You know, the magical CCTV that they have is, a, you know, a device, and so okay. gonna, yeah. Why not? Did I? Oh, position. I don't know. Yeah, controlled. I mean, these are all well, downtime stuff. Effect We're standard, usually controlled. It's bonus yeah. dice. No. No. Let's just see what happens. I got a six in there. Hell yeah! So yeah. I believe that is three. Super. Not bad. Now you're down to hard little, yeah, you're not, not a bad heat level. All right, Joe, what you doing? Hmm, let's see. How far down did we get our heat? Down to three. Down to three. Hmm. Well, I might try to get rid of some heat my own way. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'm going. Hmm? Uh, yeah, go ahead. 
Right. Yeah, I'm just going to visit, you know, a local blue, uh, blue coat um, uh, headquarters station, whatever, and convince them that they need to lose some of the files they have on us. Okay. Yes. I, I'm just going to, you know, sweet talk them, as it were. Very good. Yep. Um, what's my position on this? Oh, yeah, just these are always just going to be kind of controlled and stuff. I think okay, controlled well. standard. Yeah, controlled standard for, for all of these. All right. Oh, well, that <laughs> makes the successes everyone got. Yeah. Our, our, uh, Jail heist is going to happen sooner yep. than later. <laughs> Jeez. You know what? I think that's worth it. What do, you, what do you guys think? Jail heist? I think, yeah. I You know what? I think that's worth it. I think um, what that means is your wanted level goes to zero because they have caught the guy who is responsible for all the things. For all the things. Yeah. Oh. He's and he one. just walked right in and gave up. He in. He's like, <laughs> like, this is not where I expected to, the night to go. And this is one of the things I love about this game. It wasn't yeah. that. Yeah. Well, and. Okay, yeah, three I'm ones. Like, that's the, the dice gods have spoken. Yeah, this, this is where the night is going. Is what happens, yeah. Right? No, this is yeah. Good. So I love wow. that this is more like a storytelling game, right? Like the narrative yeah. just kind of takes on a life of its own. So yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, I think, you know, and I imagine, you know, this probably happened, you know, this problem, this may have started like Alden was out drinking or something and just like got it in his head that he was going to go in there and rough a few folks up and like didn't realize there was like riot at shift change. And while he's <laughs> fighting a bunch of guys, like, there was just way more than he was expecting. And uh, ends up in prison. And it's not until like... Like, you better do it or you'll end up like the captain. <laughs> or, yeah, you yeah. know, that one guy we killed. <laughs> oh, yeah, that guy, that, yes, that captain down in Dunslow that you killed like three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, wait a minute. You know, that was unsolved. <laughs> Like, yeah, of course it was unsolved. There were no witnesses. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, it's, I would say it's probably not, it's not for another couple of days before the rest of the liquidate, you know, the spy, the liquidators hears about, uh, about Aldo going to prison. Yes. Um, so now, yeah. Cool. I think it would be uh, funny if uh, Dashiell was leaving and they just like went by each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, maybe. <laughs> he says, "Hold on, let me have a word with them." <laughs> and he gets, he gets... <laughs> Jesus. All right. So, uh, what's Lehman doing? Uh, Rain is going to train. Okay. So that gets her. Uh... Resolve XP up so she will put a point in sway. Nice. And that's it. Okay, that's good. Uh, I think that's going to get us to Pete. Dash is going to train. Okay. So, a couple of points into prowess. Okay. All right. All right, Guthrie. <clears throat> um so let's see so i could i'm at four i could indulge vice does anybody else need well we still have heat don't we no yeah, but, we're not no, no 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 that got cleared out oh, okay. you're, i don't think your heat does your your oh the your, heat uh, double does ah okay two, um, two out of four which is fairly wanted uh, but you guys, you guys got that all cleared out. I mean, okay, I I misunderstood. All, all those crimes. So we so we still have heat. We still we have, have heat. Yeah. Not, not a not a lot. Three points. Yeah, well, three points. 
it'd still be better to wipe it out. All right. Yeah. So that's a, it's a pretty simple thing to do then. I could go ahead and uh, work on. <clears throat> Trying to repair the damage that Aldo just did. Well, that's kind of happening simultaneously, but, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny. So if I go around trying to blame someone else <laughs> at the same time, that <laughs> but maybe I will just uh, want to just get rid of all, give me all the files you got about these crimes here. Not that I had anything to do with them, but I just want them. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll I'll spin some sort of narrative is like, well, we don't, you know, while we can't account for each and every one of our members, Smith Liquidators is a good, solid company and a boon to what what Aldo was doing behind our backs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, consorter sway. Uh, yeah, you tell me. Um, let's see. Harm, logic, deception, disguise, or bluff. Consort is... To gain access to resources. So, it's a poorer skill, but it sway seems more fitting. I'm going to go ahead and use a coin for it, too, though. So, does a coin get me another die, or does it give me a... What does the coin do? Uh, it increases the effectiveness. So, so you go ahead and make your roll, and then it's like if it was like if you rolled like a like a four or five. Okay, a four so, and a five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Roll four or five. Yeah, spending the coin, it turns it into a six. Um, so so that... a four and a five is usually two, and a five and a, you know turning it into a six makes it three, so that gets rid of all the heat. Kidoki, there we go. Yeah. See, that is that is what a coin does. And now I have my bonus thing. Does anybody I... have downtime plans that they need to do? Otherwise I might just train. Going once, going twice. Go ahead and train. Kidoki. Alrighty, that is done. So I've got my uh, extra one as well, Bob. Okay. And does anybody need it for anything? Oh, uh, I might yeah. need it, but I don't think I can use it. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, decisions, decisions. Now I can train a second time, but it has to be in something different, correct? Uh, yes. Um, Bob, yep. I am going to start making a scope for my rifle. Okay. So controlled. Mm -hmm. Standard effect. No bonus. All right. Uh, we've got 
five, so that is two. Right, so let me. Make a thing. Got a nameplate. It's called Scope. That's a Scope. And done. Look at that. I am good at this. All right. Uh, so is that everybody then? That's all of our. Formal downtime activities. Now we're time to open play, baby. <laughs> time for to look for jobs and figure out what we're gonna do. Has <laughs> anyone seen Aldo in a while? <laughs> you guys talk about yourselves. I'm gonna go gonna go potty real quick. Uh -huh. So what job possibilities do we have? Do we have any current open cases? Let's see. Of course, of course, there's only three of us that are talking. Mm -hmm. Since Vetcher's unconscious and Aldo's not there. Mm -hmm. And do, who do you think I am? I am here. Yeah. Oh. Um. Well, Miss Rain, do you have any? Mina, anything that you want to pursue? I really don't uh, have anything that I can think of right now. So I'm I'm definitely available to help anybody who, you know, anybody who does have an idea. Kristoff? Are we trying to find a body for you? Okay. So, uh, so what's up, team? Well, the ghost of Kristoff is trying to talk to us about finding a new body for him. Mm. So that's that's that one possibility. Couldn't we have, uh, oh, what's the name of the place? What was the name of the, the whorehouse? You're talking about the opium den, the, uh, yeah. Emerald Dragon? What's the name of that? Emerald Dragon. Couldn't couldn't one of the uh, the bodies from the Emerald Dragon have worked? Maybe. I mean, we could give that woman one of her sons back. <laughs> or wow. I mean, we we do still have the uh, talk to the Dimmer sisters about Vetcher, right? Well. Knowing how much Vetcher uh, opposed going in person to the Dimmer Sisters, he seems to have 
something against them. I mean, we could always talk to the Lamp Blacks about taking out some more of the red sashes. That doesn't bother me at all. It might let me test out my new little friend. Now, you each all have um, contacts, too, right? What's that? Each of you have contacts as well. Yeah. Wonder if I mean, it would be easier for Kristoff if uh, he he got the the body of the Red Sash leader because she's already been prepped. <laughs> well, that's true. You know what? That's a super good point. Kristoff, what do we need to know about prepping the body and? what preparations and all that kind of stuff needs to be done. The hell is Aldo? <laughs> the body of a former vampire work? Nice. Um, any other ideas out there? So I mean, you guys can probably get your hands on that body. How would you like to change genders? Does it matter that much when you're dead? I I'd forgotten that I'd muted my mic since I was communicating oh. slowly by tapping and typing. But th is this controlled standard for the? Uh, um, I would say yeah. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Vectors bar A starts to move, and Kristoff's voice comes out of the, um, comes out of it. Ah, I can. I can use this body while he's unconscious. <laughs> oh, sure, no problems there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what's well, while you're in there, do you know what's wrong with him? Um, probably some trauma related to the previous wars and maybe something from his childhood. Okay. 
Oh, you mean currently? Well, well he's unconscious. No clue. So we we do have a uh, ready-made vampire body available. Mm. Um, so long as it hasn't been too too hor too badly damaged, might be able to work. I don't recall it having much physical harm to that body. I shot it once. Oh, did it? But it does have a hole in it. <laughs> But, you know, a little bondo and a little makeup, and who's going to notice? Um, yeah, so I think, um, so yeah, Kristoff, you're, you know, you're in this body. Um, I think you can hear, there's definitely, um, you know, Betcher is definitely in there with you. Um, and I mean, you can you can hear hear that you know hear his presence or feel his presence there. Um, Lehman, you know what 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 is he feeling of that presence that's that's there in, inside that body? Laughter. Okay. Maniacal laughter. Um, when he when he stabbed her in ghost form, he mm -hmm. thought it was the most funny thing he had ever came up to and that's what wow. turned him reckless is he just nice. did not have a care in the world and that's and that's the whole being unconscious thing is that he just isn't hasn't finished laughing yet yes yeah. Over, ah. he like hilarious. killed the same person twice so yeah wow. Over the hilarity of that one moment and of all of existence Right, and, and just like the the whole fight, the whole leading up to it, how she thought she was better, but of course he was. I mean, it, it was the, you know, a vengeful plus hilarious laughter. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that is that is what, uh, I think that is what uh, what Kristoff is experiencing, like the whole time he's, he's like talking and like, you know, moving this body like a puppet that's, that's a lot different than the old body. Like, it's definitely yes. a lot more like like physically toned and like mm -hmm. live like um uh, you know you know you like go to reach for something and you like you you like overreach because you like you don't you don't realize like how strong and how fast this body is compared mm -hmm. to the one that you you know that you lived in your whole life yes and uh but you know which is which is exhilarating but also there's just that that laughter in the background that kind of maddening maddening un unceasing laughter uh like echoing in the back of your skull uh the you know the just through your whole existence now uh, while you're in this body yeah. oh um so what do you guys do hmm. let's see not sure what to do about the laughter. It is rather disconcerting, though. I imagine the like the laughter is like echoing down hallways and like like yeah, reverberating around throughout your throughout your skull. It's just so cool. <laughs> so. Um. I guess you have you have a few a number of different routes you can go. Um I think word gets back to you that yeah, that um Aldo's in prison. Um yes. for whatever reason he uh you know it, it sounds like he showed up he showed up at the uh at the watch station and um and was but was over and was overpowered and just just arrested on the spot. Um taken to um, taking the iron hook down in the Dunslow region. Well, so on the one hand, we probably should deal with that, but on the other hand, a vampire in the party might help. <laughs> 
Well, it might do to let him sober up a little bit. So, any idea how long this uh, reincarnation of uh, Kristoff will take? Yeah, um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, if you guys just want to do it, I think you can you can just do it. Let's uh, let's get your character sheet. Yeah. Um, This is uh, oh, this is um, I have to come up with a cool uh. Let's come up with a cool picture for this one. All right, can he? Well, I'm going to put him down here with the characters now. He should be just above Ghost of Kristoff. Okay, Von Kristoff. Yes. Oh, dear, that's a lot of trauma. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So your vice is. Go ahead and read the stuff around it. Um. So so yes, the you have all four traumas. You so you choose four of those traumas that are just yours. Oh. It's, it's okay. It's kind of fucked up, kind of vampire, dude. Okay. It had to Definitely be not sparkly. Yes. So feel free to fill in all that stuff. You know, just color in the same number of boxes you have on Kristov. Ideally, I mean, probably the same stuff for the most part. Yes. Um, you, you, you see the thing on the vice, right? Um. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So you'll just uh, let me know the details of that uh, <laughs> when it comes up, dude. Okay, let's see. I don't know, let me. Let me All right, now, now what do you guys want to want to want to get up to? Well, Bob, before Aldo got arrested, uh huh, I had wanted to go back to the blue coats to the or at least the ones that were had been my friends yeah and just you know chat with them a little bit um talk about how you know our physiker has a, a new infirmary i don't know where they go to you know, get their wounds and stuff patched up, whether they have to pay for it out of their own pockets, um, knowing how cheap the government is, um, and let them know that, you know, you know, we were pretty good friends once. Yeah, you know, things have cooled down a little bit between us, but, uh, you know, I'd kind of like to, you know, keep our friendship up, you know, if, if they need you know, any healing or surgery off the books, um, you know, you know, know we'll, we'll, we'll comp, you know, you know, we'll, we'll give them, you know, any medical treatment they need free of charge. Um, look here, hearing, uh, Sergeant, Sergeant Beavis talked about, uh, how they wrap you up and I mean, here you are just like walking and talking like, uh, like uh, you still have hey, all your insides. You you guys have your job to do. You know I understand that. No hard feelings. Um, I'm just thinking maybe your medic's not that bad. He's he's pretty good as I mean he was. And I'll start telling him war stories about. You know I got. You know when I was on the front lines I got injured and he patched me up and how terrible it was out there and the. You know, 
in the bush in the desert wherever the hell we were and yeah uh, this was guy was a top of, line you know front oh yeah line. Dealing with skull bastards yeah um i mean he he put him you know he put himself on the line for us uh yeah he was a top flight medic um yeah, I remember, yeah, and I'll start describing some pretty gruesome wounds and stuff like that. Um, you know, kind of kind of tying tying into my uh uh my traumas. Okay. Uh, I mean, some of this stuff still gives me nightmares. Uh, you know, trying to hold your intestines in and bones sticking out of your legs and but uh, oh, you guys don't see, really see any of that, do you? Um, oh, we do every now and then. But uh, yeah, like I said, I know you guys got a job to do. You got to make things look good for your bosses. Um, and I understand that. You know, no, no hard feelings about that. Uh, I imagine it could have been a lot worse. So, right. uh, I, you know, we, we had some, you know, good times in the past. Um, were any of these guys also former military? Um, uh, probably some, not a lot. Right. Um, well, yeah, the ones that were are probably, enough, you know, really... be, are probably better friends of mine than, the others, so, um, you know, we old timers, you know, the one that took, took the, the King's, uh, King's shilling, you know, need to stick together. Um, even if we walk on other sides of the street now, you know? Oh, I know. So I just thought I'd pop in and let you know about the services and uh, I'll try and patch things up a little bit. And by the way, now that the uh, Emerald Dragon is under new ownership, um, you know, if if you need to let off some steam, I, I could probably talk to the new ownership and get you a, a deal. Really? That sounds all right. So, yeah, you I'll know, have share a few drinks with them and then head out. All right. But again, my my goal is to try and improve relations with the blue coats a little bit okay um so i'm looking for the there's a playbook that has I guess they, I guess it's not in not the basic stuff. Here. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, what do you guys do next? I so would like to go and acquire an outfit of a solicitor. I assume this is rain? Yes, because Vetcher is unconscious. Right on. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's not a problem. You can just get it. Because there are 
two inmates who are in need of legal advice. Oh, nice. I like this. Um, so yeah, you um, do you have? I mean, what what does like forgery and stuff fall under in order to get in there? Um, let's see. Tinker, well, that's mechanisms. Let's see. Oh, finesse, maybe. Nope, oh, that's subtle misdirection. Sway is uh, Sway. deception, Sway. disguise, bluffing. Yeah, 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 I think so. Unfortunately, unfortunately for them, since that's what uh, that's what Rain's really good at. Yep. You know what? I think. I mean, just for the for the sake of the narrative, I think it's. I think you could definitely just get in and see either one of those people as a either one of the people you want as a uh, as a solicitor. Um, who do you want to see? Uh, whoever the because uh, <laughs> I don't remember if we ever knew his name or not. The uh, the leader of the Bill Hook. His name is Carbol. Say that again, Bob. Carbol. I think I can type it out. Yeah, I can use a keyboard. Oh, it looks, looks like I can. <clears throat> I'm basically unstoppable. Yeah, so you um you get a get a meeting with Tarvel in the uh, uh yeah in a little in a little conference room. It's a uh, you know very plain and um you know, has a heavy wooden you know, all in there are these, you know, two wooden wooden chairs and a, and a heavy wooden table. And um, you, uh, you know, you're of course seated there with, um, you know, they check you over for weapons, although uh, I don't know how good how good uh, Rain is at, uh, at at keeping stuff if she wants to keep a weapon with her. And um, we can figure that out later. And uh, they bring Tarvel in. Tarvel is, um, if anything, slightly larger than Aldo. Even um, he's just mm. really big, brutish-looking dude. He's got the uh, kind of a long beard and a long, long hair. Um, a little, with a, with a little bit of a uh, kind of salt and pepper in it. Um, he looks at you like almost with disgust, and um, sits down at the sits down at a chair. This is um, so, you brought uh, you got some sort of news from me from my sister. Exactly, but I have come to. Uh, let you join her soon on the outside. Well, I would say it's about talk. Well, you. Where have you been eating? Currently, the organization that I represent has a arrangement with yours. Yeah, is that, is that my son or my sister? Bob, which one got me out of here the whole time, goddammit. It's the sister, isn't it? 
So again, the the sister is the one you've been working with. Um, yeah, yeah, the the sister is the one you've been working with. You've heard rumors that like like she and Tarvel's son don't really get along with each other, and they're both right. kind of like arguing over who should be really be running the show. So we uh, have an arrangement with your sister, but it seems that uh, her and your son are squabbling over minor issues. We have a, a contract with them, and I was hoping instead of dealing with them, I could get to you directly. I would like to relieve you of this situation that you are in and get you back into your rightful place. If that could be arranged, that I would like for our uh, contract to be ended and us establish a peaceful coexistence along the border of our territories. Wait, so you're telling me both my sister and my son are just business as normal while I'm rotting in here? They didn't uh, send you, they didn't pay you to come in here and get me out? Oh, no, not at all. We took it upon ourselves to come here because they seem to be blundering around. Um, pardon my language for your relatives. Like a, a bunch of idiots. who, Like a snake chasing its own tail. Someone strong like you would give much better cohesion to your organization. Well, you got that right. So yeah, yeah, if you could get me out of here. If you could get me out of here by the end of the month, by my birthday, then I could have a birthday celebration with both my sister and my son. That would be nice. We would even bake the cake. <laughs> yeah, cake. That's what I'm talking about. Uh... And just to be sure, if, not if, when this happens, our payment to you per score would be null and void because we would be dealing with you directly and not your family. You can consider us partners if that happens. Is he lying? Um, oh, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, yeah, hit me with a roll on that one. Um, I I always tell when somebody's lying. Well, that's right, you're always tell. Um, he is telling the truth, but you tell like you can tell he is he's a pretty conniving guy. He's trying to figure out a way to. He, he could get out of it. Try, yeah, he would definitely try to find a way out of it, mm -hmm. or find, so certainly find a way to get some sort of other influence over you. So you think, like he is, he's old, like he's old school enough that he right. would probably, like, honor the letter of whatever he agrees to, but would try to. He would try to stick us with another hook. Yeah, he would try to get another hook in you. Okay. Okay. Just. I basically just wanted to make sure it wasn't just a complete nothing from the beginning. So we no, can work no, with this. No, he, he he certainly didn't get where he is in life with you know by just by by being passive. Right, right, right. No, he, he's similar probably to Bazo Baz in that mentality of just the 
Maybe. go and, and do it probably a more higher tier and been around longer, but that he's probably a bit more brutal. You know, he's he's definitely has a more violent right. That I mean that I would I would consider kind of along with your like lie tell sort stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rain could definitely tell he has he definitely has a more violent streak to him than Bazo. Right. Uh but Bazo would prefer like if Bazo could get away with it, he would prefer to just not not have any bloodshed at all. He he's but, a little uh, lazier. You know, yeah. he, I mean, like yeah. I mean, yeah. Yep. I, I uh I, I picture him played by Nick Frost. Um <laughs> you know he is uh, from uh, Shaun of the Dead, he's the kind of chubby guy. Right. <laughs> Yep, and uh, whereas, like you know, this guy, he's like you know this big, brutal, um, yeah, this big, big, tough dude. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy that plays uh, like the head of the Reavers in uh, in in the in the first two Guardians of Galaxies movies, like uh... oh, Mary Poppins. Yeah, Mary Poppins. Oh, yeah. Right, I picture this dude is like, like, kind of like him. Oh, Michael Rooker. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Rooker. Yes. Yeah. This this dude's like played by Michael Rooker. He's like, like, kind of like, like his default is just kind of mean and tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, if you get me out of here by the end of the month. Be a friggin' miracle, and uh, well, I respect miracles. Good, then be expecting something to happen soon. And, and anybody asks, I am your solicitor. Mary Poppins, Esquire. Mary Poppins. All right. And then I I go back to base and tell everybody. Nice. Um, you know, how about we cut to uh, cut to to uh, Aldo in prison. Um. Aldo, I think you're in the yeah. I think you sh- uh, share a room with with three other dudes in these. Uh, you know, all they have, they, you know, there's no pillows or anything. These are just like uh, like like metal bunks. You know, no mattress or anything. They uh, there's uh, you know, they lock you in your cells at night. But uh, kind of throughout the day, at different periods, let you guys out for food and for, uh, you know, for some exercise and things like that inside the prison. <laughs> How is uh, Aldo spending his days? Because I think it's probably been, I would guess, probably three or four days, unless uh, somebody thinks otherwise. Okay. Hmm. And uh, just Aldo... because of the contacts, I think you... You guys have iron hook contacts, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so guys, we just fought them or bought it or yeah, whatever. Yes. You guys saw it coming. <laughs> um, yeah. Right. So you count as tier three, which is like, like you are already like everybody gives you a lot of like difference in there in difference. Um, difference. Um, I think that's. Yeah. Whatever. Um, well, yeah, whatever that word is. And um, you, uh, yeah, so, so like, like people will even like, you know, a lot of folks will like even like give up their seat for you to sit down for dinner, for food. Because um, tier three is pretty high in prison. I mean, you know, you, you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're a pretty, you know, all, you know, in addition to just being a tough dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I have the combination of being a big name here and also being the physically impressive specimen. So right. yeah, there. Um, yeah, so people come to you. You know, generally will come to you with with you know some information and stuff. Um, you're probably not a you know I would consider. Uh, 
you know, uh, Tavar is probably a tier higher than you, but uh, but you're still kind of you know, in, in, as far as pecking order, you know, higher than you know, more than half the half the prison. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So how is uh how is Aldo spending his days? Hmm. Let's see. Um, I uh, I'll attempt to make contact with Tarvel just to, you know, touch base and let him know that the um. Well, he's already heard from us about the plan and everything. All right. So yeah, you uh. Uh, am I supposed to know who you are? Um, by now you've probably spoken with um, one of my um, compatriots. Uh, with the Smythe and Company liquidators. Um, well, you mean that, uh, you mean that hot little number that, uh, you know, dressed like a, dressed like a lawyer? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, uh, okay, so now I know who, which one of us worked with her, <laughs> with with him. Um, yes. Um, I'm sure we'll have more information on how we're planning on taking care of things soon. Yeah, uh, it's. So, so what somebody I'm trying... never heard of. You seem to come in here with a lot of confidence. Yes. The confidence gets mm -hmm. you into places where you otherwise wouldn't be able to go at times. That is so true also. <laughs> <laughs> is it, true? it is true in many ways. Yes. I mean, you walk into a place acting like you own it. And, uh, and most people will agree, will, will let you get away with almost anything, so long as not they're the ones who actually own it. All right, then. Yes. Yes, but I was just here to touch base to to let you know that you are not forgotten here. And that we will always have someone watching you. Wait a minute, even when I'm going pee. Not like that. Uh, You'll have an ally close. All right. Whenever then. necessary. This I can accept. All right, let's go back to the crew at the uh, back in your warehouse at the uh, at the uh, Spy of the Company. Uh, what you guys up to? Guys, talk among yourselves while I go potty again. So, we've just got the body for um, Christoph. For Christoph now, and so yep. are we working on getting Aldo out or some other caper inside? We can probably kill two birds with one stone. Get both both of them out at once. But how do we do that? Hmm. Can we figure out what Tarvel's in there for? Probably much the same thing Aldo's in there for. Well, I don't know if we can appeal their sentence, bribe some guards. Yeah. 
So that's kind of one thing I was thinking is if uh, getting you... them somewhere other than prison would be if we just want to try to do a jailbreak. Well, I was wondering, can you control another body, Kristoff? Mm, not anymore. Oh. I was thinking maybe take control of a body and swap it for either Aldo or, or Tarvel. You know, take in a substitute and walk out with our friends. Last wow. the um... Oh, we could have killed Tarvel and you could inhabit it and then we could run two gangs. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Alas, the um, yep, didn't think of the that. problem with it, t- it with taking on the corporeal form is I can no longer switch from I can no longer possess different bodies. Uh, now I picture so you know so having become a vampire, Von Kristoff is you know inhabiting the body of a of a rather beautiful middle aged. A Ruvian, a Ruvian woman. However, it's still a dead body. Yes. So, so imagine it's a body that looks, you know, that uh, you know has to has to keep covered in in makeup. I mean, Christoph probably doesn't know makeup very well, so <laughs> <laughs> it probably looks. How do you rain does? Right, right. I imagine like probably comes downstairs like, like you know, looking now, like, does, like a mannequin or something. Does the body keep decomposing, or does it? Is it the the magic keeps it as it was? I think it keeps it mostly, yeah, basically as it was. Okay. So there, I mean, there's been the 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 few days here and there, so it's right. not so, nice, but it's not. Going to no, be just, a skeleton at some point. Without, without makeup, it's pretty pale. Right. Uh, right. There's still a, there's still a bullet hole, um, and so, and I think probably a couple other cuts and slashes. Yeah, where v- Vetcher killed her the first time, and then the second time I think he sliced her before he went yeah. ghost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, A few areas that I imagine you guys probably, you know, had to stitch up and uh, kind of seal up well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as well as some perfumes necessary, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Joe, just think of, you know, how much perfume Ahmed would always put on. No. You had a roommate who was a vampire? You're just now realizing? Uh, no. Possibly. No. Sorry. Um, uh, uh, I know his feeding habits. He wasn't a vampire. <laughs> uh, he didn't know how to cook. But, I think he yeah. knew how to take a shower either since he came from a somewhat desert country. And so to cover it up, he put on a lot of perfume. Good for him. All right, what you guys going to do? Um, so the legal system, what sort of appeals do we have to get them out of prison, either to like actually try to get the sentence reduced or removed or else get them out of prison so that we can try to liberate them outside secure walls. Oh, that's a good question. I think um I think Tolvar is in for life. And uh how how long do you guys think uh Aldo should be in prison for? Um well he penalty. hasn't been, he that? hasn't been tried yet, so um you know, probably uh, he's in until he gets 
cried and then he'll be sentenced to an extended period of time but that's true maybe a magistrate needs to review review the facts mm -hmm. i think uh i think aldo is probably looking at you know 10 to 20. Mm. Tobar, safe for life unless something happens all right. Um, so I do have the like a legal way to get them out, or are you looking for some other other way? Well, I want to start with well, the legal way since I do have a background as a lawyer, although a Ruvian law is probably... yeah. Explore both possibilities. Okay. That's hilarious. I pretended to be a lawyer and we actually have a lawyer in our group. <laughs> yep. I love yeah. it. Okay. So Yeah, so let's uh hold on. Yeah, there it, it, it's on the I think it's just confusing me. All right, so you're planning your job. So this is a social this is a social score. Using some oh. sort of connections to get him out through some sort of legal means. Now, this is two different people you're looking to get out for different crimes. Yeah. I mean, do we have uh, any idea of can we of what uh, Torval was tried for and if we could, you know. Yeah, I think it's largely social. Okay. All right, so I mean, so so as long as we decide that it's going to be a social thing, then I think we can kind of figure out what the uh, what the methodology is going to be. So, or, or, or you know what the specifics are, and then um, so you gather some information on it. So you're saying you want to you want to do some of the early information gathering. I actually. One of my contacts is an archivist for the blue coats, so sure. that seems rather applicable here. Okay. So just a consort role to kind yeah. of see what basic information we can get going into it. Oh my goodness! Oh wow! Good. No good at all. I've seen worse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have. About an hour ago. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so you, I think you go meet with the archivist and, um, yeah, say, you know, ask, start asking questions about, about Tarball's imprisonment. Um, he, uh, it says, uh, oh, oh, this is, oh, wait, 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 my, my friend. Um, you are rather, you are still rather new to these, uh, to, uh, to Duskfall, um, but, um, but Captain Gergen, uh, would not not approve of any questioning along these routes. Um, I apologize that I will have to end our um, interview and um, and and make my uh, take my leave of you. Again, I'm very sorry, my friend, uh, but we I, I simply cannot spend this time with you. Absolutely understood. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Captain Gargoyle is his like commanding officer, the uh, the head of the the guard in uh, in the docks. Mm -hmm. The blue coats. 
<clears throat> well, so. <clears throat> um, but perhaps if he were to change his mind, I should return. Uh, thank you for your time. Does anybody want to uh, forge a permission slip, as it were, from? Does anybody know the captain's signature? Or probably signet? That's not really in my skill set. Might be Mina. Okay. We need to kill somebody. Um, yeah, men, men might be able to help there, but. Okay. What did you guys want to do? Sorry. We're looking for. I think the idea was maybe some uh, forgery. Yeah. <clears throat> forgery for like uh, essentially a FOIA request. <laughs> Um, do we want to try, would that be, what do you guys think? I think Tinker. this direction, or? I think Tinker. I think Tinker, if you were going to do, like, a signet ring or something, um, because okay. it's, yeah. it's creating something. The nest is more... Is? Uh, yeah. no, yeah, it's controlled, controlled. It's or it controlled standard because it's we're still in kind of open place, though. There you go. Oh, um, nice. So One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six. Nice. Wow. Exactly what the guys got. Yep. What kind of odds are we meeting tonight? Should we buy lottery tickets? Um, <laughs> I'm crazy. Uh, no, um, we're nowhere near lottery levels of odds okay. yet. Nope. I had a pretty good roll at one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, for us to get to lottery level, to wing the lottery levels of odds, we'd be just as well taking a finite improbability drive, dropping it into a cup, into a steaming hot cup of tea, and creating an infinite improbability drive out of it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, 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 well conceived, say. So. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, so. I guess. Okay. Would that warrant? Yes. So, like, so yeah, meet up with, uh, meet up with your friend again. And um, you know, see, he and even though, all right? So, so he looks, you know, he sees the uh, the documents he came up with, and you know, to uh, authorize discussion of this of this event, he looks at you um, rather knowingly, and says, "Now, now, my friend, I know, I know for quite." Quite for certain that the captain did not author actually authorize this, but since you've gone through such efforts, I will. Um, we may speak about it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Charles well, and and, and the captain, Captain Gargal, Gargal will. Uh, We're really, really ran the docks as partners for, for quite some time. And both profited greatly from it. Um, however, the captain turned on him. Or was convinced to uh, because, well, frankly, he was. Uh, he had a bit of a relationship with uh, with Tarval's sister. In any event, oh, good. the um, 
together, they uh, they're able to gather the, uh, you know, it was quite easy for them, I would say, to gather the uh, evidence necessary to to put them away for life. And this evidence, it uh, it itself is on record. Well, of course. I mean, they had years to be able to put everything together. I mean. It, so, I mean, we're working together. I mean, it's not like, like, like Gargoyle had, you know, had any, uh, you know, he knew everything that he was up to, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And I changed the voice I was using throughout that. That sucked. <laughs> okay. Um, I thank you very much for uh, your assistance in this oh, matter, friend. And no uh, problem at all. If you could point me to the uh, the case notes and the uh, uh, court recordings. Well, it's it's not like there's a lot of court recordings. It's there. There are yes, there are. Documents of, of the, uh, and I, here I can show you. And um, he pulls out the you know the old case, um, and it's you know these big stacks of paper, and um, and shows you, you know, so the 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 main the uh, well, the crime in point was was the gathering up and uh, murdering of the of uh, the top members. Of a group called the Fog Hound, um, who were once, who were, um, I guess, rather small time uh, group uh, working in the working in the docks region in an, out of a warehouse. As a matter of fact, I may I believe uh, may have been uh, where you where your friends are. Oh, <clears throat> again, thank you. Uh, incredibly for your assistance, and I think with this information, um, fresh, uh, hopefully a profitable future awaits us both. Well, I, I certainly hope so. You know, blue coat's retirement isn't uh, isn't quite enough to make it in the world, and that is absolutely a shame. And I would be ever so glad to remedy that situation. Um. We'll find some way. All right. And with that, I'll take my leave, go back to the group, and uh, although, well, I guess beforehand, is there, uh, can you direct me to uh, local law on? Say like a self defense type of what are the rules for self defense in Duskball? I guess roughly the same oh, as anywhere. I don't know. Uh, yeah, what, whatever you think. Whatever you think they got to be. Okay. <laughs> so now, so now we just have to uh, make a narrative that he was first attacked, and we can probably get his sentence reduced so that we can get out of a jail. So, well, it kind of sounds like his sister set him up. Oh yeah, absolutely, but. You can't really argue that in court without. Yeah, because setting him up or not, it was actual stuff he did. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, does anybody have a coin or two to spend? Perhaps if we can get some witnesses saying that uh, the other side initiated the attack. and he was in a fight for his life. <laughs> I've got a couple of coins that I could donate. I think we have, so the, we have the, a bunch of crew now that they could say, and they're from the area where it all went down. So, we, right. So the so the main point here, though, is I mean normally. You can't just like go back to the same judge and say, yeah, you know, that wasn't quite right. Um, 
usually have to find something that was wrong with a you know with a case and then take it to a higher court to argue it there you know to a, a appeal to a to a higher court you know it's right so have you have to identify some sort of a flaw in the current in the current ruling and then you know you know you have come up with some sort of a technical reason to appeal it to the next to the next higher court um which in this case so so i think the legal system in Duskwall is mainly run by magistrates um so it, I would imagine there's probably only like three or four magistrates in all of Duskfall who preside over most of these cases. And you know, basically it's just one dude who hears some evidence and then like makes a decision based on, you know, based on the evidence and or how much money they pay him. And then and then uh, kind of next up would probably go to like the the mayor up in, in White Crown. I think it's a mayor. I could be wrong. Yes. The ruler of Duskwall. Who would be like the high the high judge of everything. Yeah. And <clears throat> so I don't know if we if there is any evidence we can find on his sister that we can say that the case was thrown by the defense. But uh, I guess Rain and I are, if Rain wants to visit the prison again, I can go along as her uh, attache, I suppose. I'll be the understudy, <laughs> but I'd, actually pass it. I did have one question to make sure that I yeah. understand. Um, the the sister was in league with a blue coat? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Yes, let's uh, go back and visit our client. I mean, for that matter, so was he until until she screwed him over. Mm hmm. You know what? Let's just start this job then. Done a couple of couple of roles to uh, gather information. Let's look at uh, the starting uh, engagement role. Is it bold or particularly daring? Yeah, sure. Um, explosion. Uh, I think they have particular defenses against this. But then it's probably minus one. You have friends or contacts to help. I'll give you a plus one for that. Yeah, so let's do two dice on those. Let's see what you got. Okay, you start out in a good, start in a, in a strong position, controlled. Um, that means yeah, you don't have to even like talk your way into going to talk with them or anything like that. You just get in there, the two of you to meet with them. So Rooker walks in. So Turball. All right. So what do you got? You're gonna tell me this is like tomorrow or something? Today? Are we leaving now? So we may be able to appeal your case such that you don't even need to hide from the law once you get out. All right. We have. We have. Uh, so. Wait a minute, I thought the sexy one was talking. Why are you talking? Uh, I'm studying in uh, law. He, he works for me. He is uh, studying the yes. details. He did find out one very peculiar thing that we, as well as yourself, were not aware of that led to you being in your current position that you will find yeah. most intriguing. Yeah, that captain screwed me over. I already knew that. 
Not solely. He was apparently also screwing your sister who liked pillow talk. No, she wouldn't do that. Aaron's always been loyal to me. That's why she's running the gang now. It hasn't helped get you out of jail either. Exactly. She is running the gang while you sit here. So. See. All right, well, let's just say that's true. What does that mean for us? Well, so we find the our, you discuss with us uh, your previous case that landed you here in prison, and we figure out why your obvious act of self-defense has landed you in here with a life sentence. <laughs> Hopefully he picks up that uh, what our angle is here. Well, yeah, it was self-defense. I mean, they were only in our territory. I mean, it was my own, it was my living that they were coming after. And if you ain't got your territory, you ain't got your turf, you ain't got the coin, you might as well be dead. So yeah, it was uh, self-defense. And well, I would yes, argue yes. they even committed suicide. I mean, it would be suicide to go up against someone like me. Who in their right mind would do such a thing? Uh, not only that, but who would come attack you, initiate an assault against your own person? No, 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 nobody would do that. Uh, um. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> For if you were attacked, if they came at you in an assault of, in, of which they initiated and which witnesses could attest to, then obviously you had no other course of action. You had to do what you could. You had to do all the things that you could do to keep yourself alive and from harm. Well, yeah, I had to chop the bodies up. Of course I did. Gonna make I up. think it would be best for this witness not to take the stand. The stand, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems <laughs> that uh, someone took information and withheld it from your trial because they were seeking your position over the bill. Let's see. So what happens next then? Um, well, first, could you reveal to us who was your uh, uh, defender in your case? Who presented any evidence to support your side? Oh. Yeah, the captain got me a guy. He had a had a friend of his that he uh, reused. This uh, dude named Jared. Okay, so now we need to build dirt on Jaren. J e r a n. Uh, G J e r n. Coincidentally, that is the name of the archivist that uh, is a friend of yours in the Blue Coats. <laughs> well, what are the chances it's the same person? Super slam. Yeah, like uh, one in 46,656. <laughs> no, it's all about the odds tonight. <laughs> That could complicate matters.
So we hope to have a birthday present for you, as we discussed earlier. We just needed to tie a few loose ends and prepare you for what might occur on the outside. All right. Yeah. Then you just get me in front of that magistrate. He'll let me out or I'll kick his ass. How about uh, we say that if we, as long as we get you out of the magistrate, you'll not be returning to the prison. All right, that's something. One, and then like ever so quietly, one way or the other. So. Okay. And I think we've got our work cut out for him. But yeah, he he needs to not take the stand. <laughs> <laughs> Good day. Good day to you, ma'am. Okay. Um. Yeah. What's what's the next uh, next phase of your job? Um, well, should I go back to Jaren and ask uh, who was the defender of Tarwell's case and hope that it wasn't the one and the same? <laughs> that works for me. Okay, yeah, I'll just go uh, confirm that real quick. So I will go ask the Jaren, and I guess I'll be yeah. kind of you know, quick and straightforward with it. Is that uh, so? Tarvel let us know that he was defended by a particular Jaren. On so tell me, friend, do you uh, do you happen to know this Jaren that worked as a defender for Tarvel? Well, of course I know him. He's me. Okay. And you say, uh, how do you feel about your tenure with the blue coats? Do you see much work ahead of you with them, or? Well, I've been here for quite some time. I, I, I must say, uh, but uh, as we've as we've said before, the retirement plan is not so good. Do you have a? Uh, you have another offer, my friend. Um. First, let's discuss. Say that uh, it was found that a defender did not uh, do his full potential in the defense of one of his clients. What would be the fallout of such a discovery? A lack of employment or anything worse? Well, such a person would potentially be see um, some rather stiff legal uh, repercussions. That's why I'm sure I can't help you, is that uh, I would love to be, you know, I would love to be of service, but as I've indicated before, the captain uh, was got adamant that this case be be found a certain way. Um, say that there. No, um, Say that uh, there were a certain lucrative retirement in line for you. Is it uh, possible that? You could, but merely speak to the truth of the matter. If this lucrative retirement came with a um, 
perhaps a different name that uh, we, we may be able to work something out. I do have uh, associates who work in such kind of uh, underworld activities, yes. <laughs> No, I just want to be clear. You're not. This isn't something you're pursuing just because you, you know, because you think that Tarval is a is a really good person or something. Um, some upstanding. At the story. present moment, he is the lesser of two evils, at least in our esteemed opinion. All right. Very well. But I, I, I suppose it's a thing I could help you with. I mean, uh, as you could yourself figure, it uh, at least having a dumb thug on the street is nice and predictable, rather than conniving ones running the th scenes. So, very good. Okay. Alrighty, so back to the group, and I will let Rain know that if she were, if she visits uh, Tarval again, somewhere we're gonna need to come up with uh, some coin and an identity for one of our witnesses, one of our key witnesses, as it turns out now. Okay. So if Tarval were to gain control of the bill hooks, he should have access to a certain level of coin that uh, I figure he could use to help out someone who gets him out of prison. Well, you're not talking about that asshole that got me in prison in the first place, are you? Uh, he is, but he was but a pawn. <laughs> and now he's uh, one of your key prospects for getting out of this place anytime while you st not and not merely getting out of this place, but uh... <clears throat> but getting out of this place without a bounty on your head and and knowing um, who set you up. And possibly even uh, not just a bounty, not just without the bounty on your head, but perhaps some extra leeway in future endeavors, given your history of being uh, set up by the state itself. All right, all right. Um, I guess we'll come back to this one. Let's put a pin in that one. Fair enough. So, uh, so what's next? Okay. So. Now we write up your plea. Your, uh, we oh, write don't up call your... it a plea. It's not like I'm like the freaking begging you, right? Uh, sorry, legal speak, sir. Your your statement. Yes. Uh, that that sounds bad. Good, good. Yeah. So we will write up your appeal for your uh, unjust. Incarceration. Fun. Right. Is everybody still having fun with this? I mean, doing a legal drama instead of a uh, instead of a bank heist or murder. It, it it was very strange. Like tonight, I was expecting a uh, a break out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> and then it went, and and, and then it's in jail. sideways legalese. But I mean. Um, honestly, um, uh, cash 
you know, when we go out on all the other ones, he doesn't really get to to do <laughs> his cool stuff. So, okay, yeah, I I'm not having a problem with it. Although I would like to kill somebody, but uh... <laughs> well, okay. what about your character? That is Plan B. <laughs> Good things. Like I said, <laughs> we get we get him out of jail. We get him in front of the magistrate, and one way or the other, he's not going back to jail. So, <laughs> yeah, I just find it funny as as always. The assassin group is now like <laughs> legal to <de> public defenders. <laughs> man, that's even yeah. worse. You know. I mean, at least assassins have some sort of a code. Yeah, some honor. <laughs> Friggin' lawyers. So. Yeah. Hey, well, no. hey, no. uh, we've got the perfect cover to act as lawyers. We attempt to defend someone in a trial. You know they're going away. You know which penalty they're getting. Mm -hmm. And their hands are clean. Hey, I've got a silencer now. It'll still be clean. Fair enough. It's not an eraser. <laughs> All right. All right. So I guess fast forward past the uh, yeah, legal paperwork. And, some sort of an yeah. um, you know, let's kind of move this along. And, uh, Let's take this. I think this is like probably we'll meet a couple of weeks later, and we are in we're in White Crown. Ooh, uh, one of your first times ever, and you know, possibly like the first time some like most of you have ever been in White Crown. Um, in this seat of government here in Dutch Ball, um, where you are given a short period of time, you know, given. I would, I think, uh, I think the way it's set up is appeals are only given like a short period of time where you like, you know, come before the Lord Mayor, um, you know, in, you know, in his audience chamber, right, surrounded by his his advisors, advisors and such. Um, you're given like, I would say like less less than like, like maybe 15 minutes at the most to plead some sort of a, a case before him um, to uh, to appeal a decision from one of the magistrates. So you're all, you know, you show up, you know, all dressed up in, uh, you know, your fancy outfits. And, and you know, as, as fancy you, as you guys dress up, when you come in, like, like everybody in here is dressed up like peacocks, basically. It's, it's like ridiculous. All the you know the, the fancy frills and everything that the the gaudy you know lords and uh and and and, and the governor himself all wear all these powdery wigs oh yeah like yeah exactly you know powdered wigs kind of stuff and the you know the you know the the you know the, the makeup and everything a little red oh. dot on her cheek yeah a little dot on the cheek yeah in that respect, uh, our new vampire should fit right in. <laughs> yep. And the um, you know, major Dumbo calls out. You know, the Kasim Alabin and President. Mary Poppins. Speaking for speaking for the case of Duskball versus Turnbull of the Bill Hooks. And there's like some sniggering and such, you know, because you know the you know the, the reputation of the you know that this the idea that some some low life scum gang member is gonna get some sort of a of a, of, of appeal in this in this grand court. Seems absolutely ridiculous to most people here. Your lordships, um, like the, uh, before. yeah, the mayor like is is busy himself himself with some sort of like meal that they brought out, and he kind of waves his hand, you know, just you know, just, just said, you can go and proceed. 
Uh, we are here uh, not because we need to pose the case of an upstanding citizen of Duskfall, but because we so value the integrity of the courts of Duskfall. <clears throat> and while and while our client may certainly have been due some punishment for any crimes in the past, uh, his trial for which he was imprisoned was uh, a miscarriage was of a blight upon yeah a miscarriage of justice within a, the system. We have evidence that his defense was thrown and the, there were uh, improprieties. <laughs> yes, uh, improprieties and. Uh, my goodness, what are, what are the? Uh, I can't think of the word now. Irregularities. No, oh, the tinfoil hat people. Conspiracies. Conspir and conspiracy against them. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Happens and, to me all the time. I have yeah. to work through what word am I trying to figure out. And in, in the brief you find before yourself, you can find uh, detail from even the uh, defense himself about <clears throat> how he was not allowed to fulfill his um, court appointed proper duty. duty. Yeah, proper court, court appointed duties. <clears throat> on behalf of his client. Right. Um, during this time, like, the, you know, the mayor, he is still like, it's it's hard to tell if he's listening to anything you've said. He's uh, um, like partway through, like about half the time you're talking, he was like talking to somebody next to him. And, uh, you know, he's like eating his food. Making comments about the meal. Oh, yeah. the sauce is bland. Yeah, exactly. And um, um, you see, like, your, the brief that you put together is certainly not in front of him. However, you see it, like, in the hands of, like, one of his advisors next to him, um, who, after you're done speaking, like, leans over and talks to him for a moment, you know, whispers in his ear for a moment while he's still talking to somebody else. And um, eventually you see, uh, go ahead, now, uh, at this point, go ahead and give me, uh, give me your role. So this is going to be sway, and I okay. am definitely going to push myself. Can okay. I do an assist? Uh huh. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. Like I approve. Um, I was thinking, can I give? Can I like take some stress to just assist to give him a bonus? Yeah, go ahead. Two stress, two. Okay. I think it's one stress to assist. Okay, so one stress, and that gives him a bonus die. Okay. As as you know, men. As, you, as like, men, you know, is did, like thinking on her feet, really, you know, in the middle of the, mm -hmm. you know, and and suggesting the word like cons conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So multiple people can assist. Is well, that... no, one one person can assist, but I can then help set up. Okay. Okay. Is, effect is still standard. Uh, um, a, a, a setup is plus one effect level or improved position. Uh, so if you want to do the plus one effects, that'd be good. Does that move make it up to great? great? Yeah. Okay. So basically, I'm going to be all charming and look that good is. and, you know, just dis distract that way. Oh, man. Still not rolling great, but... All right. So I think um All right. Let's do it. So So uh So yeah, you you, know, you do your talk and you have your your witness um uh is it Jared? Jared. Jared, Jared. Jared yeah. Darren, Darren comes out and he uh, like talks for a bit. Um, and again, like the Lord Mayor is like not paying attention and all that stuff. And um, 
the, the you know you see the advisor go over and like whisper in his ear for a moment, and um, the uh, you see like from a distance you see the the what you see is the, the Lord Mayor like sigh and give like a little bit of a shrug, and at that like the the advisor gives a curt nod, and then and then steps forward and he says. That says the Lord Mayor has weighed your has weighed your uh, your words with great concern and given it um, and given it all due due consideration. Your um, your client will be set free, and the your and your defendant shall be arrested immediately. <laughs> I thought that's what would happen. Sometimes it's a you know good and bad. Yep, 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 yep. yep. <laughs> Sorry, Jaron, I needed that six. I tried four dice, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry, dude. It's like oh. at least it didn't go back to the one, two, three. <laughs> oh, I understand. I wanted the six as well, and then <laughs> as they pop in, can't haul him off. We'll try to break you out when we have to break out Aldo anyway. <laughs> Because <laughs> I have no idea how to get. <laughs> okay. Oh, congratulations, everybody! <laughs> you've uh, you've successfully completed a judicial job. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's real it quick. It was a first. Yes. <laughs> Possibly a first in all of Blades of the Dark. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's look at this. Uh, did you did you contend with challenges above your station? I would say yes. Um, with the white crown. <laughs> yes. Uh, bolster your crew's reputation for developing new one. I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Let's do two for that. So I think three total for the crew. <laughs> okay. For uh. Crew, crew advancement, right? One, two. So that, yeah, for the crew. And yeah. then. That's funny. But we didn't take any heat. No, I don't really think there's much heat. Now that, you know, that is that is true. Um, I'm gonna look at, let me look at it real quick. So downtime. You get two rep plus one rep for each tier higher. Uh, you kind of took on the blue coats, uh, factions, blue coats are tier three. So yeah, yeah. So so I think three rep. To start with, is there any reason you should have gotten any more? You know what? No, I think it, yeah, I mean, it's not really quiet. I mean, Granny didn't kill anybody this time. Um, we, is... we probably do have some the somebody upset that their rival or somebody that they helped put in jail is out of jail. Yeah, oh, yeah definitely. This might be upset with us. Oh yeah, the blue coats I think are gonna to go to minus one with you as opposed to neutral. Um even after I sweet talked them? Even after you sweet talked them. I mean the captain himself is pissed off about all this whole thing. I think the captain has to go. Uh the heat, high profile and well connected. I think I, I don't think you get any heat for this. You did like totally legal shit. <laughs> That's funny. We just changed reputation with a couple of people. Yeah, do, do I have Bill Hooks on here? Yeah, you, know you have them at zero. Yeah, so let's go to Bill Hooks plus one since they're now being run by that dude. So Tarball's running him, and uh, he's going to be. Yeah, a lot you know more helpful with you guys now. 
and not be requiring you guys to pay them on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Oh, in fact, you guys just mentioned the captain's got to go. I think there's somebody who might pay us to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Okay, so Vaughn, Kristov didn't get a chance to do a lot. No. Nope. Um, no desperate actions. Did you? All right. So hold on. I need to read through these now since they're different. Have you displayed your dominance or slayed without mercy? Um, not yet. <laughs> oh, you're becoming Aldo. <laughs> <laughs> or or Dashel. Um, express your beliefs, drives heritage in the background. I'd say at least one for that. Um, struggle with issues from your bias. You know what? You just got like four more. So, you know, I think they scouts for at least a couple XP. Okay. You got a bunch of, uh, yeah, a bunch of traumas. To... A bunch of, he just picked up a bunch of traumas, dude. Yeah. And you turned into a woman, an, in, into a woman. <laughs> now, did you That's... have more than one trait before you started? What's up? Did you have more than one trait as a ghost? Um, yes, I had a couple others. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and fill in a couple of them. I mean, see, okay, with the same power level. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, they have Let's... really cool names like Terrible Power and yes. Yep. Voice and Echo. Dark talent. Uh, let's see. We'll go with arcane sight, and no, I have yeah. to take a corresponding stricture to that. Oh yeah, uh, those things come with bad things. Yes, uh, I'll work on Dashel now instead. So Dashel, yeah. desperate actions. You, you didn't get. You didn't get a lot of right. that. Desperate you know. actions. No. Um, tracking or violence. I got the shit out of me. You did. Um, express your beliefs, drives, and heritages. I think you did that at least once, maybe yeah. twice. Uh, struggle with vice and trauma. Hey, what yeah. do you think? Two or three? Yeah. To me. One of uh, each? Sure. Man. Just challenge with technical skill or man. You did help with the uh, with the legal stuff some. Beliefs, drives, and heritages. Oh yeah, you did did deal with your vice stuff. Maybe maybe a couple points. Maybe two points for men. Okay. The seam. The seam was the star of the show. <laughs> Calculation and conspiracy. Two for that. Carriages in the background. I'd say like another two there, maybe four. Did you have? They didn't really have any desperate actions this time around. Nope. But yeah, that was the definitely got to use my background that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and uh, rain. So that'll fill I, up my playbook. I did some uh, deceptions. Deceptions. I mean, you think maybe probably three, you know, a couple of times using the deception. Yeah, and then uh, leaf drives Drive. her heritage yeah. in my in my, yeah. in my voice. In your voice, that is true. You know what? Yeah, I got four because you use the voice. Oh, okay. Then I will gain playbook. Hell yeah. What do you guys think, Jailbird? I think I'm going to take Rook, Rook's Gambit. So I'm taking the special ability Venomous. Oh no. I'm choosing <laughs> uh, a drug or poison to which I've become immune, and I can push myself to secrete it through my skin, saliva, or exhale it as a vapor. And I'm going to choose the trans powder. Yeah, because you do a <laughs> lot of trans powder, babe. Yep. 
Now I am oh. immune to trans powder and nice. can push myself oh, no. blow trans powder in somebody's face from my body. Or you okay. could just kiss them. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. That'd be oh, a, nice. Kiss them. Yeah. Treat it in my saliva and and yes, kiss them. That sounds awesome. Yeah. To quote Jane from Firefly, that's why I never kiss them on the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> So I chose uh, Rook's Gambit. Uh, if I take two stress, then I can roll my highest action for anything I do. Whoa. Wow. Wow. So I could stab somebody with my sway. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking, or yeah, I'm not talking about talking. <laughs> wow. Where, where, where does Rook's Gambit come from? It's a slide. It, it's what my, my playbook is. I think, I believe it's a yeah, slide. Wow. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah, it's a, this one at the very top. Okay, yeah. I don't know why I was just like scrolling past it every time I was looking, looking up and down the list. <laughs> that is awesome. There's a lot of good ones, but I that one will allow oh, yeah. me to do more things. Yeah. There's wow, so I just things. imagine if Aldo took that one and based everything <laughs> off of Rack. It'd be a cool one to pick up as a veteran, you know, as as a you know, your veteran ability. <laughs> You're like, you know what? I'm just gonna punch things. Until yeah. they stop moving. All right. All right, that was a really interesting session for everybody this is very different yes. very fun it very yeah, much this fun session fun. brought to you by the number one <laughs> well, well said yeah. <laughs> yes not only not only did you know the whole prison being involved not be what you know that, that was not at all what i was i had planned then then you guys went around went about solving it in a completely different way than i I would have expected. <laughs> well, I, I kind of like Mike's idea for next time of, you know, there might be somebody who's willing to pay to have the police chief or whatever. Yeah. Taken out. Yeah. yeah. This might lead right into that stuff. <laughs> well, thank All you right. very much. Thanks, everybody. Good game, everybody.